So kombucha is a fermented tea. It's a natural soda. In UAE, the history of kombucha is still very, very short. If you go to Australia, UK, US, you will see the shelves of kombucha would take a big portion of it already. We really need to expand and extend, you know, it's no longer this, you know, mom and pop shop. It's becoming actually an operation of a larger demand and scale, yeah. Just focus on understanding that this drink is what the market wants. So how did you guys start it? On investment. On investment, yeah? College fund for kids. Yeah, okay, kids gonna wait a little bit. It works as a marketing as well, because this is really very unique concept in the whole UAE, if not the whole region. I would say it's around uh, 700,000 dirhams. So free revenue streams and everything is made here. We're not going to invest 5 million in a warehouse and set up everything perfectly as we want it from day one. Everything what you see is mostly is developed by us. Cooler rooms, boilers, filling machines. I do not want to compromise on quality and this is like where our start starting point for the pricing is. We are filling the gap, very big gap in the restaurant and hotel industry here. We just tailor our life to the business. Welcome everybody to episode number 20. Today me and my team in Abu Dhabi in Mina Souk. And the topic is kombucha. We're gonna meet Aurelia, another female founder that runs a nano brewery with kombucha bar. So what is a kombucha and what it tastes like? Let's go and figure out. Hello Aurelia. Good morning. Nice to see you nice here. Nice to see you. So what is kombucha? Kombucha bar? Kombucha bar is the first bar in UAE of a sort. So kombucha is a fermented tea, okay? So it's a natural soda, if you want to call it like that, because many people in this country, they don't understand what it is, yeah? So we are a nano brewery, which makes uh, this drink right here, and we serve it on a tap right here. Okay. So in that sense, is an experience which you get of a drink produced, not just in UAE, it's produced right here and you uh, enjoy it right here. So we have different flavors. So even though they say that kombucha is a fermented tea, we actually use a lot of herbs and natural ingredients to flavor it without actual make flavors. It taste, yeah. It's a make a taste, yeah. So we have everything from ginger to berries. Okay, so kombucha itself, like what was the origins? Is it popular in UAE, in Abu Dhabi? Look, um, in UAE, the history of kombucha is still very, very short. Um, it has started maybe a few years back. There is a few brands already in Dubai, we've seen it. Um, however, compared to anything in the Western world, it's still a very nascent market, okay? So if you go to Australia, UK, US, if you go to a, you know, a healthy store, or even just now, even to any store like supermarket, you'll see the shelves of, of, of soda drinks and kombucha would take a big portion of it already. Here, none of that yet. So as we have been traveling with my husband, you know, before we got two kids, we saw that abroad and we thought that it would be cool to have something that is a healthy alter alternative to a soda drink. Yeah, because most soda drinks con con contain, um, you know, stuff that... Sugar. You no, know, lots of sugar, essentially, right? And many preservatives and sweeteners, stuff that makes your stomach bloat. We wanted the opposite of that. We wanted something refreshing, tasty and healthy. You know, so we wanted something that is healthy, but yet not ugly tasting. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we had COVID years to try to do it. And we think that we have succeeded experimentation. Uh, over 800 experiments we have, you know, done of different flavors and tastings to achieve something that we feel is a very good balance of sweetness and acidity uh, to the market. All right. Let's, let's step in. Let's go in and uh, try some. Exactly. So why kombucha bar? Why not... Uh... I don't know, kombucha restaurant or kombucha coffee shop. Yes, so for the kombucha bar, I will tell you like that. So, you know, in this country, it's very popular to have big places where you can find anything you sort of want, right? From a sandwich to juice to, you know, to, to a pipe. Uh, and we thought, okay, this is something different to what we are used to because we used to live in, in Scandinavia for almost 10 years. And there things are very petite and small and the focus in, on the quality, not the size and the Little quantity, cozy yes. Places, yeah. So we thought that, okay, we want to make a specialty store. We want to really specialize in what we do best. And if we succeed, and after maybe some years, if this drink 
performs very well. Maybe we can think of some menus, collaborations, and you know, open up a bigger space, etc. But we started very small and organic, you know, self-funded, so that we, you know, really just focus on understanding that this drink is, you know, is what the market wants. The good thing about it is that actually in Minasuk um, there is many food places. So to the right we have pizza, to the left we have Serbian cuisine. So you know, in a, in a way that we don't need to try to outcompete them in what they're doing best already. Yeah. So we are like complementing them. So when there is a pizza night or when people come for a Serbian meal, um, we have you know kombucha ready for them. So it's it's very often the case that people order food there and they come and we serve our glasses on their tables. Okay, is there a thing like you drink kombucha on your own or like with the food? What Actually, it goes with? I mean, the same rules apply as for any soda, frankly. Like if you drink Coca-Cola, you know, just to refresh yourself after a sport or you, you just feel that you want something to drink, the same goes for kombucha. So how we consume it is like morning with breakfast, okay? Because it helps to energize you in the morning and it helps to digest your food very well. Then for lunch, in order not to have this, you know, sleepiness, drowsiness after the lunch, it also helps, you know, to get that energy back. And for dinner, if you have some heavier meal, for example, if you have meat, etc., then it actually helps you digest and go to sleep with a well, half empty stomach, let's say, yeah. From your business perspective, drink every day. <laughs> <laughs> How about this place? I mean, it's quasi nice uh, kombucha bar. Yes. I don't know, you're getting a lot of traffic. How does it work? So look, I mean, the Minasuk uh, has been a relatively abandoned place a few years back. Um, but now um, Alda, the property manager here, they decided to revamp this place and make it like this small niche specialty place, you know, souk. So, you know, there is people who really start to be passionate yeah and and they come specifically for here and that's why they're asking us like can you do some options for subscription deliveries etc which we are in progress to in yeah. investigate before jumping to the refill bottle yeah. do they like uh, mina so they invited you on you or you found a space how did it work so the, the story is as follows when we sort of figured out at home that we could make a business out of it yeah. by accident uh, a competition uh, nyu competition with alder came across it was called manasa competition of startups in F fnb okay the prize of that was a place in a chic mamsha okay a shop in mamsha Mams ah, so basically what you won we won a competition and you know by the end of this program it took some months we realized that look we do not want a fancy posh place you know, in Mamsha with lots of track. We want something off beaten track. And at that time, Alder was taking over this place and they offered, okay, if you don't want that place, why don't you take some of these shops? So it was actually 2020, okay. 2020. And then we were like, Alder is like, okay, we are giving you the keys in July. Boom, COVID. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. You know, and we're like, okay, so where is the keys? And everything was frozen. So instead of being able to set the shop up, like almost for one and a half years, we were just, okay, let's just focus on the product instead. Since we cannot open now, let's just focus at home on the product, like perfect everything, try all these flavors. And back then we had baby number one and then baby number two was coming and, you know, work from home and all this, you know, depressing environment of not being able to travel. We just released our energy onto kombucha. Yeah. And then by the time sort of COVID wave has ebbed and Alder finally said, okay, we are finally getting approvals for this place. Here is the key. It was last year, last year, June, 2022, June. They gave us the keys and then voila, we go to build. Not a lot of people know how to set up because behind these taps is a cooler room. You know, you, like the guys of cooler room, like how you want to make the taps. We had to figure out by ourselves. But why did you want to do that? Why? Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you why. Because, you know, we saw it abroad. We saw it in Australia, like the tap room. Okay. Um, we were fascinated by the idea of like people having a drink and socializing. Just like in a, like you would go to UK or New York, there is a bar, people come to socialize. And we know this country is non-alcoholic, yeah, it's halal, everything. So we thought, okay, by having a nice glass, a nice presentation and a nice tap straight from the, you know, brewery would give that idea of, you know, of actual, you know, healthy, nice drinking in a community. Everything in the spot. In the spot, right? So, so that, you know, it's not just, of course, people take away bottles, but sometimes, you know, when you feel that, okay, look, I can straight draw from the tap, it's just... You know, it looks very sexy. People love it. Let's get back to it. But I want to ask you about, uh, yeah, this what, refill bottle. Yes, this is a refillable bottle. This refillable bottle came uh, as a request uh, by um, by customers. Actually, the customer, some customer said, look, my dear, like you give me this bottle. 
I mean, it's gone like in split second. I cannot do anything with it. I like, I would not even leave a shop. I will drink it and I'll give the bottle to you. People said, okay, I need, I need, I need a bigger bottle. And we offer them, okay, whatever is available today on the tap, we can just fill you on the spot and you can bring it home so fresh. I'm, 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 I'm coming, I'm buying a bottle and then... Yes. So the first purchase is you pay 25 dirhams for the bottle and then the rest you don't. So it's also sustainable. Yeah. It's environment sustainable because obviously we don't need to uh, recycle, redo, reproduce all, all these bottles. What's that? This is a flexing in front <laughs> award. Um, so yeah, less than a year of establishment, we managed to pull out a global award in um, in, in in Kombucha Universe. Okay, so it was organized in Spain. Um, the committee was, you know, very recognized wine tasters and also kombucha experts. So we chose three three different tastes. Okay, we chose three different tastes: it was yuzu, lavender, and ginger. Let's try this. <laughs> let's try, let's it. try it out. What, whatever you're talking about, let's try it out. Um, okay, so um, we have um, lavender and rosemary, which actually almost uh, got a global award. Um, it had it scored very high. So this is the one that you guys sent. So this is one of them that we sent. Yes, this is lavender and rosemary. So it's a very unique uh, flavor. It has French um, lavender and it has uh, local rosemary. Uh, and it has a little bit of Lithuanian nettle leaf. Okay. Which we pick ourselves. We you know, as stingy nettle leaf because it gives you that aftertaste. Because you're Lithuanian as well? Because I'm Lithuanian there as you well. Go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because we need to have a touch of local. This is a fusion place, you know? But you're talking about kombucha now. I feel I just need to, you know, smell and do the, all the process. Exactly. Is it? Also, like people going so deep, like trying to taste, trying to smell, and I mean, I'm telling you, like for example, in the global competition that we had with the sort of the scores that we have, it's really the smell, the taste, the texture, um, the aftertaste, how long it stays, you know, what's a, like the, the fizziness, all of these parameters. So, you know, now the nowadays world of kombucha is really to make it drinkable. So we actually give uh, tasters here in, in the bar and every event we go to, we always like, okay, we have small, you know, small taster cup like this. You just like, okay, you want, you want to try some just a little, just a little bit. Yeah. So we taste the people and believe it or not, like 95% of those who try, even the ones who said, I hate kombucha, they actually do. Um, yeah, they do end up liking what we do. So you basically still need to do a lot of education in the market. What is kombucha and come and try it. It's a big challenge. We try to make some banners and leaflets and all of it just to, because it's very hard, you know, a million of times to say what it is to every single person. I would say more than half of people who come over, they still don't know what kombucha is. Okay, can you tell me what is what is made of? Kombucha is made of um, water, okay? It's made of water, it's made of sugar and tea as a starting point. Um, and then additional herbs and ingredients, spices. Uh, so fermentation lasts for a certain amount of days. And then the whole thing is, you know, handled, put in the kegs, handled there. Then we either put it on the tap straight from the keg or we put it in bottles. Okay. So like well, four, four ingredients. About the bar itself. Yeah. So I don't know what percentage wise, how much income it generates from the bar or you still need to guys work around? So yeah, actually bar is, uh, I would say just one third of our income. Okay. Yeah. So we are expanding broadly business to business, B2B. So restaurants, hotels started to notice us and they started to invite us because they have what they have in the non-alcoholic menu. They have water, they have orange juice, they have some non-alcoholic beer imported. Yeah. And then they have some mixed domestic locally mojito with like this much syrup. Yeah. So if you go to this nice place, if it's a Michelin restaurant or very highly rated restaurant, like you want to your meal, something that is mixes well with a meal. Yeah. So. Of course, if you drink alcohol, that's just wine and champagne. But if not, then what is that alternative? So we feel that we are filling the gap, very big gap in the restaurant and hotel industry here. And we also are very popular in events. I think like to every single event that's been around, everyone invites us because we have a small solution like this, like kegerator on a tap. So basically it's a fridge with tap. Yeah, so it's a tap tower. So free revenue streams, the face of the company with the bar. Okay, and everything is made here. Everything is made here for now, but not for long. All right. Can we check it? Yes, you can. Yeah. We are welcome to the kitchen. Now, if you want to have a look at our nice, cozy little brewery, I want. just let's wear some protective uh, head and shoe covers, and then we can go peek inside. Crew, your favorite stuff. <laughs> let's do this. So here we are in our small, uh, nice brewery. Um, so here is my co-founder, partner, husband, 
the father of my kids, including kombucha. Ignas is responsible for mostly operations in, 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 in the brewery. So who, who are you? Main brewer or what, what's how we can call you? Main brewer, uh, operations manager, dish cleaner, um, whatever, sugar mixer, uh, tea preparation, bottle filler. Well, we're just standing next to our newest bottle machine. Um, whatever is uh, here and needs to be uh, made a product from A to Z, this yeah. is uh, my responsibility. Taking a lot of roles. What is the team size? Like, obviously, I believe that someone else is working with you. Yeah, right? yeah. so we have uh, three persons working with me in here. We are, of course, expanding, maybe getting four and five. And, uh, of course, uh, later and on in the future or in the coming few months, we're planning to get a full warehouse. So we have in total now six people. Six people. In the bar, we have three people. Bar, bar staff is responsible also for the events and everything here, but the, the brewery staff only works in, in, in the kitchen. It looks fancy, complicated and expensive. So you said that what is a bottling machine? Yeah, it's a bottle filler. Uh, what we use to fill our nice bottles. I think you can see all around you, there's some bottles in the crates and so on. Yeah. Some of them can I grab one? Yeah, sure. So this is our ginger lemon. Award winning flavor. Mm -hmm. We cannot get enough like of these bottles because the demand is huge. Is huge. Specifically this one. Yes, ginger lemon and berries are the two flavors that all are selling off shelves. Like you know, we we you know there is ginger in the back, um, which we're bringing every second day, like in big boxes, and you know we just feel that we actually end up peeling ginger a lot of our time. You know, there is a person who I think on Monday peeled ginger like for eight hours. Okay. Straight. Um, so this is how much a demand is. Is there any automation kind of yes, of course. process could be there done? Is, yeah? There is. Uh, that that's what will be coming up. Uh, that, that's why we decided that, you know, we, we're ready for the next step and we really need to expand and extend, you know, it's no longer this, you know, mom, just, and, pop you know, shop. mom and pop shop. It's, it's becoming actually an operation of a, of a larger demand and scale. Yeah. So what it takes to set up s such a brewery? I mean, is it custom made? Is it something like somebody, is it dedicated to kombucha or? So everything what you see is mostly is developed by us. Uh, all the cooler rooms, boilers, um, filling machines, everything what we find out, can ceiling is there. Can ceiling machine. Okay, so, yeah. which, which we're gonna That's try. our new line of canning actually. We started just this week. Actually, it's a customer demand. Yeah, we had a few um, big uh, customers asking for a more environment, environmentally friendly alternative, easier to transport, easier to store, etc. So for partly environmental reasons, other just logistics. Okay, because as you hear, the bottles is always, you know... Make noise or, or because of the weight or... The weight also is a... You a know, lot is of weight. So a if, lot if of you weight. take one crate of bottles, I can fit 60 you can, you cannot carry crates right. uh, in, in uh, the same cans, I can put, put 80. The weight is much less. Uh, so what is it, like a half? What, what is the difference? 30%, 20%, 30%, 20%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, which makes 25, sense for 25. the logistics, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It accumulates, you know, when you really carry like and, uh, 60 crates. And what about feeling, let's say, drinking from the can and drinking from the glass bottle? So that's why we're not stopping the glass bottle. The demands are different. Look, we have customers, B2B customers, especially who just want a bottle. Yeah. But likewise, we have just customers. And imagine the event of like 50,000 people. If like you have sold, I don't know, 5,000 bottles, where are they going to end up yeah. in an event? Yeah. So it's a hazard, a risk and all of that. While the can is swish, recycling bin. Done. 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 Okay, makes sense. And in order to set up everything, did you found it locally or you had to import? How does it work? But the biggest challenge of setting up the shop is that actually there is nothing here locally because simply there is no brewery industry. The items is coming from Norway, you know, some items are coming from Germany. We had to figure it out. I remember we were shipping at the time of the pandemic. Um, the shipping cost was like twice the actual item. But we really just wanted to go with the industry standards. Like to, to set up such a brewery like that, can you give me like rough estimate how much in, in investment you need to put on? Uh, yes, uh, I would say it's around uh, 700,000 dirhams. 700,000. To set it up. Yeah, to set it up. Only brewery. Only. Plus the bar and everything. Yeah. 700. 700 including. So how did you guys start it? On investment. On investment, yeah? College fund for kids. Okay, kids gonna wait a little bit. <laughs> so what's your plan? When to break even? Um, I think by 2025. That's our yes. business plan, to break even by 2025. Which is not that far. It's not that far. That's actually, you know, we're surprising, we were just discussing yesterday that when we were sitting in 2022 and mapping out the business strategy and plan and everything, it somehow 
you know, it falls into places. Back then it seemed like, oh, we're gonna open a warehouse. Yeah, right, I mean. Yeah, straight away. <laughs> I mean, now it's like, we don't have space. Yeah, we have kombucha bike. Yeah, right, in two years, yeah, yeah, yeah. We thought this is where we're gonna start and end, you know, and then somehow it just, and we look at our business plan. Yeah, it's actually numbers are adding up. So it was a good exercise to actually just sit down and for three months just focus on mapping out the business future planning um, so this is uh, the main one of the main things that we have is uh, the boiler it's 6.6 kilowatts heater of the water 150 liters is max can do and it, uh, it boil the water yeah the boiling water and then what we do is we mix the teas and ingredients sugar at the right use, temperatures yeah we use only uh, 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 unrefined cane sugar so we put it here we do our uh, process as we go, like... Like you mentioned ginger, everything goes here, I don't know. It depends on our process, but it goes here now, it's uh, reached 90 degrees, so I need to turn it off. Um, what we do, we start to cooling down, it has to cool down to reach a temperature that we can start uh, uh, putting the scobies and uh, what we do, kombucha starters. So we move from that, this to this stainless steel uh, stout tank, as we call, or uh, tank. It, uh, one of the shelves is reaching uh, 75, 80 liters. Uh, we do it here or we have uh, jars, which is all the substitute for it. And uh, we start our small fermentation process. Like to chill and then start. How yes. long is fermentation process? It depends on, again, on the flavor. And then we see it, uh, maybe it can take from up to two weeks or uh, even less or even more. Okay. Uh, so, so average is two weeks. Like one to two weeks, actually, depends on the flavor, really. Yeah. 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 And yeah. then what we do is from this, we need to do two things. As we filter it out, so not to have sediments and all the uh, not good materials that we have. And like then, ginger pulp or stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. And then we move into kegs or unitanks. Some of unitanks we store directly in a cold cooler room. Okay. A okay. cold room. And this is a baby here. Uh, when we build it, we thought it would be too too big. Now it's uh, too small after nine months. Okay, I understand that you need bigger. Yes, and much more. Okay. So, um, if you want to take a tour, yeah, check come. So, the big babies are here. We have one, two, and three. How many liters? Yeah. 140 liters uni tanks, uh, stainless steel, highest grade from Norway. Um, it's, a, it's a massive improvement in the whole process. I'm quite sure when I move to the warehouse, I will have like from 300 to 500 to one, uh, 1,000 liters. Okay, yeah. So huge BBLs. Um, and then yes, we have the kegs, which are already stored. We have kegs here. So the kegs when uh, Aurelia said you're going to events and uh, yeah, yeah you're take, taking this one. I take this baby. Yeah. So we have already stored our product, the bottles. Um, as I told you, we have uh, the cans. Get me, yeah. Let me show you one. So these are our the cans. Mm -hmm. Very comfortable. 250 ml. Yeah. Eye catching, and uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna do in our future. And of course, uh, there is some all our experiments where we run the champagne bottle line. I can give you a later a little. Sure, show me one. Okay, give me just a second. Oh, okay. It looks like champagne. So it's our special flavors, uh, meaning this is a luxury grade Gyakura, which we leave in this nice bottle. What does it mean, Gyakura? Gyakura is a, a Japanese... Uh, high, one of the highest grade Japanese teas. So we do just single origin um, tea, yeah, for, for this type of, of bottles. You hired what? You Hi hired Japanese, Japanese greatest tea? Uh, highest, Jap grade. highest grade Japanese tea. So it means it's, uh, it's not uh, five dirhams. Yeah. It means like it wants to go to... Uh, Look, if you delve in the world of teas, there is like a, you know, hierarchy okay, yeah, of its yeah, own, yeah. you know, from like what you get lipped on in the bags in the shop to like, really like, if you go to Japan and China, these guys are crazy about teas. So some of that we want to, you know, introduce in these champagne bottles. Okay, so that's going to be premium. As a solution for restaurants and hotels who are serving like dining uh, experiences. Do you still call champagne? Kombucha champagne or no? It's a champagne bottle, um, but we call it a sparkling fermented tea. 
Okay, so it is kombucha, but the process of that is slightly different. Mm -hmm. We have um, already a, a sort of a cold storage for just like, it's a wine type of uh, yeah. place uh, to store wines uh, to make them mature. Can you promise when you're gonna open that uh, new brewery? Yeah. What do you call it? Warehouse or brewery? Warehouse, brewery, big brewery. You're industry. gonna smash that bottle in the door. Yes. <laughs> okay. I hope it's gonna smash, but yes, yeah. we're gonna do it. <laughs> Yala. Yala kombucha or yala bucha? Um, yala kombucha actually, but we use yala bucha for uh, social media just to shorten the, yeah. the uh, name. And the website I saw as well. Exactly. Yala bucha is our yeah gateway to the web world, but okay. effectively it's yala. Because it was, the domain was uh, yala kombucha was used or? No, actually we just didn't want a very long name and okay. it just sounds maybe shorter yala bucha. Shorten yeah, so it, so. yeah. And I saw your social media, Instagram. Back in the days, I think logo was different. It was different logo, yes. Tell me, what so happened? Why did look, you change? Uh, the whole story goes back to the just home setup, okay? Um, 2000, um, I think it was 2018. We don't have anything. We travel around the world. We discover kombucha. Actually, we, I was on the plane reading uh, Noma's Guide to Fermentation, a book, okay? I discovered kombucha from there. Um, then accidentally on the Christmas market back home, I discovered this guy selling small starters for kombucha. Okay, I take it home and there. this is how the story begins. I, I start to do pro produce it at home. My husband looks at me like, don't even... Why? Because it, it doesn't look nice, yeah? It doesn't look nice. The There's mushroom? a scoby, the mushroom, all of it. Like, you know, the whole process, the bottles that we initially had was just some random bottles that we had at house. So it was not nice. So, and then from there on, it just accelerated. After a few months, my husband's like, mm, it, it's tasty. Give, give me some, okay? Then my neighbors, my friends, like, it's yummy. Like, you should try to go sell in a farmer's market. Is it like, okay, if I want to sell a farmer's market, I need some sort of representation. So I go to Photoshop. <laughs> Let's just do a logo. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just do some sort of label. Tomorrow is a farmer's market. I need logo today. Exactly. Huh? Yeah. I have no clue about anything, marketing, nothing. I'll just, you know, this is how you do a circle, YouTube, everything. Okay, fine, whatever. We have some label, we have some flavors. Um, let's just go. We go to Ripe Market uh, with uh, my partner and husband. Um, we sell off, like, okay, this is something. And here it begins, and we start to think about, okay, now we need the full-fledged branding, now we need, like, equipment, now we need the recipes, we need staff, we need everything. If we want to go to the perception, this is a premium draft, you know, brewery, we need to we need to get a designer. So we actually found a designer back home in Lithuania. You know, we really were looking for an expert, like really like expert of a field to do something that, you know, is really of su super quality, you know, for what we felt very comfortable with. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we hired a person to, to do to do the, this type of uh, design work. So we hired another designer to help us to set up this place because as you see, this place also you know, requires like, you know, some poof, some, you know, wall uh, work, some logo work. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we, we needed that help because our main focus was the product, perfecting the product. So branding, yeah? Yeah. What, what kind of activities you guys do in terms of marketing? Um, in terms of marketing, we have Instagram. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> you know, we do have Instagram, yeah. Okay, our marketing is this shop is our marketing. Yeah. Because this shop has a you know tap wall, and this country, this region doesn't know much about kombucha. So for the best way to market a product which you don't know about, it's just to give to try. Yeah. There's also many events that we participate in, uh, where we bring a tap solution, we bring a you know kegerator with uh, with taps, and we just give uh, give samples to. Yeah. to people to try and we feel that this is the best way to discover and understand and then along that comes of course you know some brochures some information our staff is educated to do the introduction etc oh, wow. but on the social media it's it's limited to the instagram for now um and we will be launching a website very soon so you know there these things like i think social media part lags the everything else okay so who who does the posts on instagram you yes everything i mean it's i saw it's active so you need to learn, yeah? You um, have to learn that. Yes, I mean, look, uh, as I said, like, we do not have a role of like, you only do that or you only, it's a, like a startup, okay? So everything is very organic and we learn as, as it comes. Yeah. And of course, at some point, I know we have to, 
outsource that part too, which is, you know, having a business go, grown from your home is not easy to do. It's not easy to give away some things that you used to do. Like, we still to this day like are in the kitchen often to, you know, guide the process and, and control everything. So you want to make sure it's going to be up. Yes. Up to the standards, the, exactly. the way you want. Yes, the way I think it to be. it's important for us that we like our values are portrayed in everything we do. Like, for example, it's very hard, like social media part is hard to give it to someone unless you really are sure that this is going to be consistent with what you want to say. Uh, the world of social media is a bit scary to us. Maybe we're a little bit like older generation already. There's all this millennial work on TikTok and Snapchat. We need to set an example first and then based on those examples to maybe give someone to okay. continue the work. And what about like sales? How do you guys do sales? Okay, so the way we do sales is, uh, first of all, here in the bar, okay? So that's one channel of people coming and taking it here. Second part is events and all the activities outside this bar. Third is B2B. So we have business partners, we have restaurants and uh, uh, some, you know, places uh, like coffee places which start serving our drink. Mm, and soon there's going to be also hotels. So our B2B part is expanding because obviously this is a niche product and a niche market. So we feel that uh, many places which want to have kombucha and they told us, you know, we have tried, we have really tried many, many times to make it in-house yeah. and we have miserably failed. So why don't you come in and help us yeah. sort this thing? It's so you mentioned a thing, uh, bar, it's what is it? 30% of the... 30% of the revenue of for the now. the business, yeah. Yes. And the events? Events is another, I would say, 30%, roughly, yeah. So then 40 is... 40 is a B2B, B2B. and it's a growing part. So do, do you guys approach bars right now or they approach? How does it work? So far, they have approached. <laughs> I must say... Somehow like, marketing it works. They know about you somehow. I feel it's just like people have just been in one of our events and they've seen, oh, I've been there and I've tried and I would like to have it in my shop or okay, in my place, okay, yeah. you know? So it's really like that part really works. What's the difference between obviously going to event and actually getting into the bar? When you go to an event, it's, it's pretty much like the revenue is yours. You can decide what you want to offer, what you want to sell. When you go to a business, they know exactly what they want, you know, in a shape that they want, the flavors that they want, even the label we sometimes discuss. So they want a label with their logo. Um, the logo has to be there and there's lots, lots of negotiation happening. So that's a big challenge. We don't have it when we go to events because in events we just bring product as is. Yeah, this yeah. is us. Take it or leave it. Take it or leave it, yeah. And so are you guys flexible, let's say, within, I don't know, hotel or, or the bar? Like, will you do co-branding? Yes, we are flexible. We have a co-branding label. Yeah, the only, the, we have some requirements just to represent our brand so we want our logo to be in and some elements of our design to be in however that being said you know the white labeling is is coming as a request more and more often so it, it is something that we want to consider for the next year i can start episode up kombucha line yes, yeah exactly yes could this kombucha have any alcohol at all? It doesn't have alcohol. Zero? Yes, it has zero alcohol. It's, uh, you know, we have it uh, appro approved by authorities and the by authorities limit is zero two, I think. Um, uh, so 0 0.2, 0 .2. that's the limit. Yes, that's a, that's a Dubai limit to get the product approved as alcohol free. Abu Dhabi is a bit more lenient, but we approve the product in Dubai because most of our B2B clients are actually in Dubai. So do you need to somehow control in that process? So it has yes. zero? Because yes. usually, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but this kombucha usually ha has some kind of... Okay, so this is where the sci science comes in, okay? Because the culture of kombucha is bacteria and yeast. Yeah, and we have managed to develop a culture which is heavy on bacteria and low in yeast. Okay, because, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's yeast that takes uh, sugar and converts to alcohol. And then that alcohol is converted by bacteria to the acids, organic acids. Okay, um, so in this process, intermittent part is uh, ethanol. Okay, it's converted to organic acids. And that's why you feel kombucha is acidic. So we just make sure that we have the right culture. We developed the right culture. Okay, um, and yeah, we let the bacteria dominate. We need to make sure it's halal 100% like certified and all of it. Um, so we just you know, have equipment which measures everything to 0 0.01 and it measures the acids, the sugars, yeah. all of the ingredients. Yeah. So this is what we have built. So when you start product in FMB, what's the process to get approvals? How yeah, hard so, is it or how easy? Uh, first of all, you build a place. Yeah. It has to be food authority approved place. Okay. Like so this place, yeah. Huh? Like yeah. Bar. First you need a place. Okay. So if you, you cannot just start the product from home kitchen. To so get permits for this place, it has to be approved by authorities from the civil defense to the food authority. 
Okay, food authority has to literally go to your kitchen, certify every, even the drawing, even before you build something, they need to approve like every, like the drawing here is gonna be the kitchen, the sink. This is a list of equipment I'm gonna have, okay? So we start with actually just setting up, setting things up. And then the, the next one, you, when you have everything, it's, it's close to the product registration, so-called. Then you have a product and then you go with this product to the food authorities again. And you say, I want to register this product as a unique product, give me a barcode for it, give me all the like, you know, ingredients and all of it. You go to authority, they go send it to the lab several times, test it all out, approve it, what you have on the label is correct. And they say, okay, this product is approved. So if you create new flavor, you need to get again approved? Yes, yes, exactly. Awesome. It takes a while, but you know, this is where we are going because we don't want just to be, you know, stuck in, in the shop and the setting. We want to go broader. Like people really are requesting like Bahrain, Saudi. We have clients who came to us several times taking luggages of kombucha to their countries. So obviously it is multicultural. Yeah. You have multiple flavors. I see the menu. How do you guys, I don't know, do that test or how do you do market research? to cater everyone when or people like come here and we have for example we produce some flavor which we think okay let's try orange rooibos let's see how it flies people come here we test it out and if people like if we get acceptance like eight out of ten we say okay this is something workable well, what, what do you what do you need to ask like what do you like it or yeah simple as that because we make a product for people to enjoy it everybody can be polite like, oh yes of course very nice no, but you know, we see like, people coming back. You can basically see, okay, which flavors are selling better. And out of 850 experiments, when we actually had to sit down and choose, okay, which is the flavors that we're gonna put in the bottles, it was a big headache for us, like huge headache, you know? So I asked my designer, can you develop 10 labels for starters, 10 labels so that we have, you know, options if something doesn't go, then we can at least change the variety very quickly. But we had to start with, uh, I think we started with five, and then use the chili we introduced as a seasonal. Everyone loved it so much. We had to pull it in. So let's talk about numbers. I don't know how, how much, what is your capability to produce? So it's a nano brewery. So current our capacity is 10 to 15,000 units per month, bottles, 250 milliliter bottles. Okay, that's what we are capable because in this whole process, everything is for now, like some machines, but also manual work, yeah, to fill, etc., to cap, to brew, to you know, pour the jars and all of that. It's a lot of manual work. For now, now it's very hard to, let's say, tell you exact numbers, how much we sell it from a keg because it's many events right now. So we go from the tap, yeah. Is it a goal to go to the, more to the business side where you can go to the, I don't know, barrels or, or cakes, you said? Actually, we already have received a few, a few requests from, again, Dubai customers, uh, either setting up or already set up, who want to us not just to provide the cake, but introduce the full system, like the full, like the full solution. Imagine like you are, I don't know, some vegan place and you want to have an offering on tap. Yeah. So they, because they have no clue what, how to make it, as we did not have a clue. I mean, they don't want to produce and everything. They don't want to produce, but also they don't want to, let's say, they don't want even to think about how to set it up. Okay. They want it on tap. Yeah. That's all they know. But they don't want this wall because it, for them, it's like the whole change, right? In they want some unit, portable unit, like we have in events, to put aside and just be able to serve on tap, like say two flavors. Integrate somehow, yeah, maybe. So currently we are developing actually an offering, which uh, because we now know exactly like how it works. We feel that this expertise has to be somehow monetized as well. You know, why we, you know, we struggled with it such a long time. We feel that, you know, if somebody else wants this type of thing, we can just, you know, offer it to them yeah. at a reasonable to price set up, to yeah. set it up and to provide the kegs, refillable kegs as well. Very, you know, friendly environmentally and all that sustainable. So that's another line of business that we will develop next year. But again, everything, we follow everything by by the demand, like for example, yeah, the new lines of cans and... Uh, is it good to follow demand? Is it not gonna be then you're gonna be over the place because demand's coming from different sides? You know, uh, it is true. And we already start saying no to some collaborations and some things that people are asking, like we have requests some, can you bring like, I don't know, 40 bottles with your own fridge and put it in my gym? And we said, no, like, sorry, this is just too much consumption of time. This is not where we want to be, this is not what is good for us. So we have to say no many times now. You know, we really try to focus on the partnership. So we build up trust, you know, we understand like what we want to achieve with them. So for us, it takes time to just to, you know, filter out what, what it needs. So I'm looking at this menu. How did you guys decide on the prices? Like what to charge, you know, per, per I don't I'll know, per flavor so, or what? Uh, our pricing is um, mostly coming from the cost side. 
and our cost like to set up a, a brewer in, in this in this country and to run it and to have all the super high quality equipment is very expensive okay i know that you know some people will not appreciate say like okay why do you have a stainless steel you know machine from us if you can just have something locally produced in musafa you know i do not want to compromise on quality and this is like where our start, starting point for the pricing is our cost is high especially as we are like still handcrafted brewery we still are in the process a lot every batch has a testing you know we need to test it testing kits also are expensive you know if you test the quality of all the products is you know it sums up very quickly right yeah. then the bottles the labels okay so and then we wanted to keep a reasonable margin for us so that by 2025 as our initial you know finance plan suggests we need to break you know to break even yeah in some way so um yeah but this is like a unit of economics if you're gonna scale then we uh, we actually could potentially reduce the price also because if we scale you know we scale when we have bigger machines we have less manual work and for again for the flavors that we already have do you know the profit margin per bottle or per liter how do you calculate somehow this um yes i mean we have we're talking about like maybe 20 30 percent yeah margin for uh us gross margin and i was uh, researching before this interview and i think this is standard for this is what for actually this is the normal for, for the and it's industry. only massive massive companies with big breweries exactly. they can reach to 40 something yes yeah. exactly okay. no look i mean i'm telling you like a lot of cost is really involved with just handling the process with care so what, what's next i mean you you mentioned about capacity and numbers yes are you like fully fully in the production line or you still have space or uh, so look, some storage space we're already renting out, like outsourcing some of the, our stock we're already storing uh, outside. Um, but uh, for the actual production, we are setting up a warehouse next year. We want more precision. We, wa we want like more streamlined process. Yeah, we want like actual bottling line, the canning line, much bigger fermenters, higher ceiling and all of that, which comes with it. So to set up actual, you know, big brewery. So this is in plan or this is like... This is in, in execution because we already have the warehouse. Okay. Rented, yeah. So the deal is signed now, it's just a matter of like setting up it the way we want. It. All right. And what it takes to now from, from, from the bar, from Nano Brewery, move to that warehouse? It's funding and it's equipment, you know, so... It's still self-funding? Yes. Like we grow organically. We're not going to say, okay, I'm going to invest 5 million in a warehouse and set up everything perfectly as we want it from day one. We say, okay, we set up minimum requirements for us to be the year that we want to be in revenue terms next year, okay? And then once you have a space, you can easily always, you know, build it up, buy more machinery, invest in another bigger line and things like that. We are the opposite of what this market is in all ways, you know, because how businesses are set up here is like this. See that empty place? Let's do something. <laughs> Voila! In three months, it's like, uh, you know, everything with gold and plates and all of it. We don't feel this is uh, how the business should work. The business should work organically. You need to test and try and run and like, don't overinvest initially. You need to understand your market, you know, make a step forward, maybe one step back, two steps forward, you know, it, all this is trial and error. Right. So, I don't know, what's the plan? What's the plan in the market next two, three years? How do you plan? Um, yeah, so develop the B2B as much as we can. We, we feel there is definitely, a, you know, that, that gap which needs to be filled in the non-alcoholic uh, alternatives, especially in the, you know, nice hotels and restaurants where, you know, people are eating uh, nice steaks and, and sushi and whatnot. We feel that this has to be on their tables because this is the drink that complements the food instead of conflicting with the food, which many drinks currently are if you are in a non-alcoholic section. So, um, what are about e-commerce? Um, everybody talking about e-commerce. Look, we already have client requests to deliver everywhere, to Sharjah, to Alain, etc. I will say the website, which is still under development because we are just behind everything. But yes, we want to do e-commerce. I think it's a big thing. It's a, it's a retail product as such. Uh, there is no reason why it should not be on online store. So by the time we open next branch, we may as well just also expand the just delivery to door. Yeah, you know, this is very common. So listen, what do you need? What do you think you need in order to ramp up your e-commerce? We need a good website. <laughs> okay, I will repeat that. Uh, is it finance, time or skills? What is it? Um, probably all of them because we have never been in e-commerce. You know, it's like we do not have understanding how you optimize your website, how you get noticed, things like that. Logistically, 
Of course, we have issues logistically. We have now tried three, four delivery companies. Now we finally settled on one because delivery here is like, you know, you need to trust guys, the drivers, the cars. So do you deliver in Abu Dhabi? In Abu Dhabi and Dubai. And Dubai. Yes. And in Dubai you said once a week. Once a week, yes. Which is obviously not optimal. These days, like when people see Instagram, I want it now, now, now. And they send 10 messages like, can you deliver today? You want it like, you know, like, well, no, we cannot deliver today. <laughs> I mean. So what, what would be other option to have like a partnerships? We have received, uh, we have received some, you know, nice offers from some similar industries or clothes industries like fruit industries too. If you need the help in Dubai, you know, we have some storage place, we can help deliver in Dubai, we're already delivering anyway, other things. So maybe that's gonna be the way to just uh, sort out our distribution, you know, just to find someone who could, okay, help us. Okay, if it's a delivery location is like Dubai, certain area, we, you know, store it there instead of like going to each and every location. If it's Ajman or Sharjah or Russell Heyman, we have the same there, also a lane, right? So yeah. that would be something that would probably seek because we, frankly, we cannot set up in every location and delivery from this place or whether it's a warehouse, um, it is it is going to be a logistical challenge. It, I mean, partnerships will come with expense. So No, it's, it's it comes with expense, but uh, I can tell you also that, you know, if you have someone ordering a drink today in a lane and it has to be in two hours and I cannot provide it, it's also expensive for me to provide that service, yeah. you know? So it's at the cost of like, there is a certain balance of expense and how you want to meet clients' needs, you know? So we want to meet clients' needs, but also we need to minimize the cost of it. So you guys running everything, trying to micromanage, run, run the quality stuff. Two Troubleshooting. kids. Troubleshooting. Yes. Troubleshooting. Two Doing kids sports, and everything. Two jobs, yes. How do you manage everything? How do you finding the time we just don't sleep we don't have beach time we don't have netflix time we don't go to movies yeah. <laughs> we don't do all things uh, things that other human beings do but we focus on something that we feel is like look outside like daily job like just trying to make this our activity okay so we involve our kids for example right if we come here we have something we bring our kids to play there. If we, have, if we have an event, we go together with kids and try to enjoy whatever that event brings, right? So instead of like having activities which are non-related to our business, all of activities have to be tailored to the business. Like for example, the trip which we had uh, to take our global award to Barcelona, we tried to make it as a, as a family affair, you know? Like we went there, my parents came, we had some fun with kids, we had some, you know, good meal and just walk around the city, so we just tailor our life to the business. What would be your next hire? The next hire? Kitchen. For, the, for our upcoming brewery, we need more staff. So we're gonna teach them here and just, you know, gradually, sure. Is there, a, 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 is there an area that you think you don't have enough skills and would benefit somebody um, to hire from the industry? A running a manufacturing unit Gladly, we found a guy who has run a chocolate factory. It's a, I know it's a completely different, but in the region you cannot find another brewer. Um, so just running a factory as a, as a unit, like loading of loading, like big equipment and things like that. The, the, the line, the bottling line, whether it's another line, doesn't matter. All, you know, it all requires some sort of knowledge of, of, of that setup. So, so that's why we looked for a guy who would have experience in a um, in a bigger place. Yeah, once you're gonna launch. Exactly. Okay. Like I said, I'm looking forward for invitation to the launch with the champagne bottle. Yes, we with can do it together. With the kombucha in the champagne bottle. Exactly. To yes. the door. Let's do it. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was, it was pleasure, pleasure to speak to you. Likewise. Yeah. You like the kombucha? Let's enjoy <laughs> the chili one. So how many liters have we taken today? A lot. <laughs> many rounds in the washroom. <laughs> Another great conversation with a great story. I really enjoyed uh, the timeline that they started at home, the friends recommended to go and share with other neighbors and friends, end up in the right market, won competition, and now basically they are here and they have a bar with the plans to scale, open the warehouse, open the bigger brewery. So definitely best of luck. They inspiring me, hopefully they, they can inspire you. Everything starts uh, small. 
come try kombucha taste it feels good tastes good as well by the way i see they have a happy hour on thursdays so if you want to grab a deal come and try this is episode number 20 see you in the next one